Hi everyone, my name is MJ and I'm an educator at the RISD Museum in Providence, Rhode Island. You can pause this video at any time to think, look, or respond to my questions and activities. You'll need a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper to write with, so now's a good time to get those things. Pendleton House is a building in the RISD Museum that looks like a fancy early American house. It's made up of different rooms you can explore that have artworks and furniture from the 1800s. In this hallway, I want to take a close look at a painting that expresses one European American artist's ideas and perspectives about the changing American landscape in the 1800s. This painting is by an English American artist named Thomas Cole, who painted it in 1828, almost 200 years ago and 10 years after he immigrated from England with his family. At that time, most of the East Coast of the United States was inhabited by people of European heritage who were changing the environment through farming and industry to suit their way of life. Let's take a moment to look closely and see what descriptive words come into our minds as we look at this. Some words I think of when I see this painting are landscape, dramatic, majestic, and ominous. What words do you think describe this scene? I wonder what artistic techniques the painter uses to make this landscape look so dramatic, majestic, and ominous. I see high contrast. Cole painted using light and dark colors that change quickly. Maybe there's a storm rolling in from the right side of the picture. I also notice my gaze keeps swinging back and forth along the curves of the pastel colored mountains in the distance. The darkening clouds, orange light and shadows on the mountains and cliffs in the middle ground, and the scraggly broken tree in the foreground, which looks broken and dead but also somewhat alive because it still has some leaves on it. Another detail in this picture that I find fascinating is the small figure standing by a waterfall near the center of the painting. To me, it looks as if they're pointing toward the direction that the sunlight is coming from. I also notice they're holding a staff or stick. They have a warm, medium dark skin tone and they're wearing a bluish dress or tunic and something on their head. Based on some of these details and other paintings I've seen by Thomas Cole, I believe he's probably depicting a Native American person. I wonder what motivated Thomas Cole to create this painting. Why do you think he painted this scene in this way? Thomas Cole was critical of how fellow European Americans were radically altering the landscape. In the 1800s, European Americans were clear-cutting forest land for European-style farming, creating new railroads and canals like this one for travel and shipping, and building cities and factories which polluted the environment. Coming from Europe with a very different relationship to land and with racist ideas that they were culturally superior, white settlers were eager to control land and resources. They forced native people from their home territories, at times killing them or forcing them into slavery. In his paintings, Thomas Cole presents a view of nature that is counter to soon-to-be President Andrew Jackson's belief in manifest destiny. This idea that the United States was destined by God to expand and spread its form of government, democracy, and capitalism across the North American continent would soon become popular among European Americans in Cole's lifetime. Thomas Cole's landscapes focused on the beauty and awe of nature in contrast to the booming industry and materialism he experienced while living in busy New York City during the Industrial Revolution. By traveling to paint in the countryside of New York and New Hampshire, Thomas Cole shared a lesser seen perspective of land and place. 
I wonder why Thomas Cole included one lone Native American person pointing toward the light, possibly a sunrise or a sunset in the distance. Maybe he was sharing a message of despair about light leaving and a storm closing in on nature and humanity. Or maybe he wanted to show the opposite, that people in nature, despite environmental destruction and ongoing genocide, always move toward hope and light of the coming day. Grab a pen or pencil and take a moment to reflect and write a response to the following prompt. Do you think this painting is spreading a message of hope, a message of despair, or some of both? Use visual evidence to support your opinion. You can use the sentence starter at the bottom of this slide to get you started. We have another painting at the RISD Museum with some interesting similarities and differences. This painting foregrounds the person with details that show us about them as an individual, unlike in Cole's painting where the landscape is the main focus. Think back to the Thomas Cole painting. How does this depiction compare with the depiction of the Native American person in that painting? Artworks such as these continue to play a role in shaping people's mindsets about Native American communities. Harmful stereotypes contribute to settler colonial violence against indigenous communities in the United States. We are going to hear a little bit more about one of these stereotypes. Here's another European American painting at the RISD Museum, which depicts a first encounter between Narragansett people and English settlers, including Roger Williams, founder of the colony of Rhode Island. This painting is often used in history books, even though it contains many stereotypes and inaccuracies. One of those is the myth of the vanishing native. Here's a quote from local Narragansett Niantic educator and director of the Tomaquag Museum, Lorenz Spears, speaking about the vanishing native myth in this painting. Something that bothers me in the painting, if you look at the top right corner, those four warriors blend right into the smoke. For me, that represents the erasure of us, that at some point we're going to just become part of the sky and no longer exist. Lorenz Spears goes on to describe how disheartening the myth of the vanishing native is and how common it is to see illustrations that make it seem like Native Americans either don't exist anymore or are going to disappear soon. Instead of acknowledging the many ways that white Americans are directly responsible for the genocide of Native people, the myth of the vanishing native makes it seem like it's just fate and it's nobody's fault. Finally, the myth creates challenges for Native American people today, who are under pressure to prove that they, their families, and their cultures still exist, beyond the generic stereotypes that settler colonial mindsets want them to fit into. Let's return to the coal painting to write a few new thoughts. How could Thomas Cole's painting perpetuate the myth of the vanishing native? Use visual evidence to support your ideas. Again, you can use the sentence starters here to help you begin. We've now learned a lot about the painting Landscape, created by Thomas Cole in 1828. I was thinking about how museum curators write labels that sit next to the paintings in museums. They're created for visitors to help them learn a little bit more information about what they're looking at. I thought it would be a cool challenge for us to write our own museum labels to go alongside the Thomas Cole painting. Look back at the painting and your written responses to create your museum label. Your label should be a paragraph or about 80 to 100 words long. It should include one or two sentences on each of the following. First, a simple visual description of the artwork. In other words, what are we looking at? Next, some important facts about the artwork's context. 
like where, when, and by who it was made, what was going on at that time. Last, what are the ideas the artist was exploring? Why did he make this? Now is a good time to pause on the slide to review what you've done so far and write your label. If you want to see some examples, you can click on artworks you find on rizdmuseum.org slash collection, noticing that not every artwork will have one. Landscape paintings and portraits like the ones we've seen today are European artistic traditions. Native American artists have their own rich and diverse creative traditions. Find at least two examples of creative work by Native American artists in different media. You can look for textiles, paintings, sculptures, photographs, songs, dances, or poems. One place to start is by searching Native on rizdmuseum.org slash collection. Taking inspiration from what you notice and learn from one of these artworks, write a paragraph about what the work reveals about its maker's context, relationship to nature, or sense of self. Pay attention to the style of the art as you reflect. For example, I was curious to learn more about the traditions of the Haudenosaunee people who come from the region of New York that Thomas Cole sometimes painted. And I found this hat hand embroidered with glass beads, which may have been made during Cole's lifetime. I also wanted to find something by an artist who's living and working today. And I thought of this print I really like by John Quick to See Smith. I did more research to learn that the print is called Sticky Mouth, based on the word for bear in the Blackfoot language. There are so many details to explore, so I'm sure I could write a paragraph about it. I hope you've enjoyed exploring Landscape by Thomas Cole and have been inspired to reflect, write your own museum label, and research creative works by Native American artists. If you have any questions or thoughts you'd like to share, or if you want to post some of your work, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me and please stay in touch with all of us at the RISD Museum.